Hello everybody, Scott Goldman here with the um, Smackdown review for the 20, what, 21st of uh, January 19, or 2022. Um, it's Smackdown, so it's a flat show for the most part. A week away from the Rumble, I don't ever remember being, maybe last year, but I don't ever remember being this unex uninspired by a uh, Royal Rumble coming up than I am right now, and that's, what, 33 years as a fan at this point, um, good gosh, anyway, so, uh, we open with the Roman Reigns segment with the Usos, fine segment, uh, Kevin Owens gets a decent reaction, Owens, uh, would be the first of many surprises on this particular occasion, including Big E, Johnny Knoxville, Summer Rae, Jeff Jarrett, and Bischoff. The recap from previous week, the Usos, already in the ring, starting SmackDown. They get a mixed reaction, point out no former champions such as Kevin Owens, Seth, Seth Rollins, or Brock Lesnar had held the title as long as the Usos, and then they get Reigns a grand introduction. Uso, uh, Reigns makes his way to the entrance. He gets a mixed reaction. Reigns demands naturally acknowledge him, and the fans pop. Jimmy then introduces highlights of 508-day reign of, Ro of, of Reigns as champion, um, including matches against Kevin Owens, Daniel Bryan, Edge, Cesaro, Rey Mysterio, John Cena, Finn Balor, and Brock Lesnar. Reigns and the Usos are very impressed. Reigns then... Uh, is about to speak when Seth Rollins' music interrupts. Reigns notes that he's impressed uh, with the package, and Reigns agrees. Rollins then mocks Reigns for sending the Usos to Raw. He praises the Usos for being the longest-running SmackDown Tag Team Champions. Remember when Championship Reigns meant something? I will give WWE credit for one thing, and that is the Roman Reigns thing is something they've been committed to over 500 days, nearly a year and a half. Really a good thing there. Uh, Rollins notes the Usos prop up uh, Reigns like he and Mox do before. Rollins then tries to start a Usos chant. And Reigns mocks Rollins. Asked if Cena wrote his promo. Reigns promised the Royal Rumble would be a singles match and he doesn't need the Usos. Rollins then said he'd find a partner and challenge the Usos for later. Tag team win and the Usos are barred from ringside at the Royal Rumble. Reigns had stated, but Jay accepts the challenge. He added that, that Rollins wouldn't be able to find a partner anyway. Rollins laughed and wondered if he could find a partner. Suddenly, Kevin Owens' music hits, and he gets a huge pop after the break. Cole confirmed that that's tonight's main event. What a flat main event. Anyway, Kofi Kingston with Big E defeated Madcap Moss with uh, Happy Corbin. 7.42. This match goes way too long, and it's a throwaway. Uh, match is okay. It drags uh, in the middle. Uh, before the match, Corbin and Madcap Morris make fun of Kofi Kingston because why not? Uh, then we go to kind of a um, bit of a run there. Um, and then they brag about him beating him last week. They make a bunch of bad jokes. And then Kingston makes his entrance and point of the back. Big E's music hits. Moss briefly has an advantage. Kingston fights back, hits the boom drop, and sets up Trouble in Paradise. Corbin causes a distraction, give Moss some space. Moss throws Kingston to the floor, tries throwing him to the steps. Kingston jumps in and jumps over the steps. Back from the break, Kingston is firmly in control, stumps, uh, and then Moss slams Kingston into in, to regain control. Finish comes when Moss comes off the ropes. Kingston hits Trouble in Paradise out of nowhere for the win. Big E challenged Corbin to get in the ring. Big E gives Moss the big ending, and absolutely no one cares. They show Jimmy Allen sitting at ringside. They introduce Summer Rae at ringside as well. She's considered a legend. What the heck? Anyway, Aaliyah defeats Natalia 209. Match is horrible. Uh, short, uneventful, and uh, weak finish. Cole mentioned Natalia's trailer feud with Summer Rae. Does anyone care? Natalya jumps Aaliyah to start the match, but Aaliyah rolls up near fall, and Natalya then uh, regains control. Discus Larry for another near fall, then the finish comes with Natalya stomping on Aaliyah in the corner until the referee disqualifies her. Fans loudly boo the finish. 
even the announcers aren't impressed with the finish post-match. Natalya jumps the lead until Zaya Lee runs out for the save. Cole and McCaffrey discuss two-night WrestleMania, calling it stupendous. I don't think so. Um, then the Viking Raiders defeat Los Lotharios 219. Why have them get dressed for a two-and-a-half-minute match? Um... Raiders, early advantage. Eric slams Ivar into Humberto. Angel makes blind tag. Heels take over for a minute. Heels then double team, double basement drop kick for near fall. Uh, Eric then recovers, rocking Humberto with a knee. Ivar tags in. Finish comes when Eric hits the world's strongest slam. Power bomb on Los Lotharios. Same time, Raiders hit the Viking experience and get the win. Um... Recap of Adam Pearce announcing Naomi versus Charlotte Flair for tonight. Uh, Charlotte Flair defeats Naomi in 222 with special referee Sony Deville. Hopefully they build up this Deville and Naomi feud in a way that actually leads somewhere. Uh, obviously the whole match is there to further the feud. Before the match, Sonya comes out and demands that Charles Robinson take off his shirt. Uh, she starts the, She does the deal as a referee. Naomi tries to escape. Uh, Flair's control early. Naomi uh, gets kicked to Flair and uh, gets locked in with the Boston Crab. Naomi then hits the rear view on Flair. Gets a visible three count, but DeVille watched on from ringside. Naomi yells at DeVille, which allows Flair to attack Naomi's leg. Um, Flair then locks on the figure four for the win. Uh, didn't tap out. DeVille calls for the bell. McCaffrey asks, uh, what in the Bret Hart is going on? This is horrible. Uh, Kid Rock is sitting at ringside. At least the show would be relevant if it was 1999. In Zane, Zane is decent enough uh, doing the basic jackass thing. Cole claims uh, Zane's going to outdo Johnny Knoxville. He's going to prove that he can do anything Knoxville can do but do it better. Zane grabs a cattle prod and Uses it on his own leg. Zane screams out in pain. Increases the level and then screams again. Zane gets back to his feet each time he goes down from the cattle prod. And Johnny Knoxville comes out. Fans break into a brief Johnny chant. Knoxville then grabs the cattle prod and realizes Zane didn't turn it on. He tried it and shocks Zane. Zane drops to the mat and could barely move. Knoxville then dumps Zane over the top rope to hype the rumble. In the back, Adam Pierce speaks with Eric Bischoff in his office. DeVille enters and is surprised to see Bischoff. Pierce notes that that's what's happening with Naomi and speaks to management. They show a trailer for the upcoming 2K22 video game. Seamus with Rich Holland defeats Rico Ricochet 318. Why have them get uh, dressed if they aren't going to get decent time? Anyway. Uh, Seamus hits Tilt a World Backbreaker, taking him over, then slows the pace down with a chin lock. Uh, uh, Ricochet fights back with a standing dropkick. Seamus then regains control with the Iris Cursed Backbreaker. Ricochet then avoids the brogue kick and follows up with a dropkick off the middle turnbuckle. Ricochet goes for a dive, but Seamus hits the jumping knee. And in midair, Sheamus then hits the road kick for the win. Uh, Rollins and Owens defeat Usos with the 15-minute DQ. Rollins and Owens win. The Usos barred from ringside. Uh, and if the Usos win, then, the, then Rollins loses his title shot at the Rumble. Uh, decent main event, but the finish is horrible. But why do we need real finishes? Because we don't need to treat it like a sport anyway, right? Anyway, Usos take over and stormed on Rollins in the corner. Rollins recovers and backs Jimmy into his own corner. Rollins and, and Owens isolates Jimmy on the side of the ring. Rollins then claims to climb the top rope. Jay causes a distraction. Jimmy takes advantage. And attacks Rollins. The Usos regain control, and Jay rocks Owens with a super kick at ringside. Back from a commercial break because we got to take those in the middle of matches, isolating Owens, cutting him off from Rollins. Owens fights back and avoids an enziguri from Jay. Owens responds with an enziguri and returns returns to retaining control himself. Rollins then hits a springboard knee for a near fall. Jay fights back and gets a suplex into a neckbreaker for a two count. 
Rollins then goes for the buckle bomb on Jay, but Jimmy made the blind tag. They then hit an assisted small drop for a near fall. Owens tags in, hits a pop-up power bomb on Jay for another close two count. Owens then climbs the top rope, but Jay cuts him off, uh, attempting a superplex. Owens then reverses into a fisherman. Jay then catches Rollins with a super kick. We've seen like four of those in this one match already. Owens then avoids super kick from Jay and hits stunner. Jimmy then catches Owens with another super kick. Hey, we're up to five. Rollins then takes advantage and hits super kick. Hey, we're up to six on Jimmy. Rollins then sets up the stomp, and the fans begin to uh, singing the theme music. Suddenly, Roman Reigns comes out, hits a Superman punch on for the disqualification. Fans erupt. Cole then claims uh, Reigns realizes the Usos are about to lose. However, the Usos are barred from ringside. Royal Rumble seems uh, to be working against the title shot, and there we go. Uh, completely flat network television show, but we'll be back right after this.